Hi there, I'm Zoot Java. Today I'd like to talk about Parler, or more to the point, I'd like to offer my opinion to the MSNBC piece that was done as an information offering about Parler. First, I'll give you a short background, which you can find in more depth by typing Parler into Wikipedia. According to them, Parler is an American social network service with a significant user base of Donald Trump supporters, conservatives, and right-wing extremists. Posts often contain far-right content, anti-Semitism, and conspiracy theories like QAnon. Journalists have described Parler as an alternative to Twitter, and it is popular among people who have been banned from mainstream social networks or oppose their moderation policies. Parler markets itself as a free speech and unbiased alternative to mainstream social networks such as Twitter and Facebook. However, journalists and users have criticized the service for content policies that are more restrictive than the company portrays and sometimes more restrictive than that of those of its competitors. In June 2020, some users reported being banned from Parler for espousing left-wing viewpoints. Ben Collins was questioned on MSNBC to explain Parler, and this is what he had to say. These, by the way, are paraphrased by me, but the ideas put forth are his. First, he said that Parler has many issues, but it is basically another form of Twitter that isn't very user-friendly. He claims that they are fine with racism and hate speech, but they're not fine with all sorts of other things. Swearing or nudity is not really allowed in some cases, so it's a free speech platform in racism only, he says. When questioned about whether Parler is something that the everyday social media denizens should be worried about, he answered with this. He said that we're going to be living in a new future where the debates and fights that we had on Facebook before, we're probably not going to have those anymore. People are going to be in their little silos based on their app and Parler is one of those silos which is funded by the Mercers, who also funded Breitbart. They have a specific political angle with that. And the word is that if you're spending your whole day on Parler, getting inundated with one thing, and you go out into the real world and talk about politics, and your reality is wildly different from the actual reality, then we're going to have problems societally. We're going to have problems across the board. And that's the new frontier. In the next couple of months, we're going to start to see that. People are going to be living in their own silos, not even confronting the other reality. When it's siloed, it just pops right up as far as into the halls of power. He points out that there are communities on the internet exclusively devoted to de-radicalizing people who have gotten into QAnon. They've been stuck inside the last few weeks scrolling through QAnon, so now this is a good time to step in and say, Hey, Mom or Dad, I know you've gone down a bad path. You've been stuck inside with this pandemic, but let's come back to reality now. There's people who are getting de-radicalized as we speak. My take on this? Well, to start with, I haven't got any first-hand knowledge of Parler, but my curiosity has been piqued and I'll be creating an account there shortly so I can size it up for myself. Until then, I'll go by this information which has me rather interested. First from the Wikipedia article, well, they insist that it is a social network of Donald Trump supporters, conservatives, and right-wing extremists with posts of far-right content, anti-Semitism, and QAnon conspiracy theories. This sounds remarkably like Twitter and Facebook in a mirror image, where you will find Democrat supporters, liberals, and far-left extremists. Racism is found absolutely everywhere, and groups such as Antifa are allowed to organize on their platforms to meet up for evenings of destruction and violence. Journalists say it's an alternative to Twitter, popular among people who have been banned from mainstream social networks, or oppose their moderation policies. Well, people get banned for the slightest thing that either criticizes the Democratic Party or far leftism. Example, I spend approximately 15 to 20 minutes tops a week on Twitter. 
I was recently banned for referring to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with a derogatory term. Not a swear word, but I admit it was in poor taste. However, I thought it would be okay to call her this because the same day I saw someone refer to Kirstie Alley, a renowned conservative I might add, using the exact same term, and his tweet was not removed, yet mine was. Journalists and some users have criticized Parler for being more restrictive than the company portrays or more restrictive than its competitors. I can't see the problem because when conservatives complain about, say, Twitter's terms of service and restrictions on their speech, leftists thumb their nose at them, stating it's a private company, they can do anything they want. They don't have to let you have any free speech. And they're good with that. Obviously, they're also too stupid to realize that one day this is going along with an attitude that is going to have them getting bit hard in the butt. Another astonishing thing about this is many times arguments have arisen about the lack of free speech and the censorship of conservatives on these sites, to which the leftists have countered on many occasions with, if you don't like it, set up your own sites. Someone comes along, the conservatives go it to it, and the leftists begin screeching that the site should be shut down. Apparently, some users said they were banned for espousing left-wing viewpoints. As much as I disagree with this happening, all I have to say to them is, well, welcome to the world that you're in love with, like Twitter, Facebook, and their lovely little terms of service, which basically says, no conservatives allowed, because... They're a private company, and they don't have to allow free speech, remember? Ben Collins stated that Parler is a free speech platform and racism only. Well, I'll find out when I open an account and look around. Not to mention, Ben, racism is all around us. It isn't something exclusive to people from middle to the far right. The left is a swirling pit of racism who find to hide their hate in groups masquerading as those fighting fascism and racism while holding contempt for the exact same people. I found it hilarious that he said Parler was a silo based on right-wing racist attitudes, citing it being funded by the Mercers who also funded Breitbart, who have a specific political angle with that. What does this guy think that Facebook and Twitter are? They're so left-driven politically that they're part of the reason that the election went the way that it did. Conspiracy theory? How about banning anything that was true about Beijing Joe Biden? leading the way as your head racist from saying if you don't vote for me you ain't black to saying poor kids are just as bright and talented as white kids to giving a eulogy at a Klansman's funeral Robert Byrd and how about censoring all the information about Hunter Biden's laptop incriminating and disgusting information that is Collins says that people will get brainwashed basically by being fed all this misinformation on Parlor, of course, and when they go out into society, their perception of reality is going to be wildly different from what is actually going on. So naturally, his answer is for these ever so tolerant leftists to simply say, okay, let's just go back to reality now. We'll get you de-radicalized. That's a hot one. Has anybody seen any of these blue-haired Twinkies running through the streets peacefully protesting <clears throat> by attacking people, throwing Molotov cocktails, trying to trap police in a station so that they can't get out, and then attempting to burn the station down with everyone inside? Whose reality is wildly different from the actual reality, Ben? I don't get trapped in silos, Ben. I look around at different information sources and figure out the truth from that. But it's obvious to see what silo you stuck your head up inside. Anyways. Now for that part that uh, <clears throat> you've all been waiting for. My bad joke. So, has anybody heard about the new movie called constipation well it hasn't come out yet
Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me out. And even better, it bugs the people that run the platform. Hit the bell for notifications of more of my words of wisdom. Share my content on your social media because I get censored by all the usual suspects. And until later, have a Java on Zoot.